everybody. Thank you for joining us on Beyond Paranormal with Ben and Cheryl Ledoux. I'm Cheryl Ledoux, and Ben will be along in just a moment or so. Um, tonight we have a really great show planned for you. Um, I hope that you have seen our ads on Facebook. If you haven't, make sure you go on. You can find me at Cheryl LeBlanc Ledoux, or you can always find us at the DTM Wicked Radio Facebook page. Um, we always advertise who we're having on. Um, tonight we have Sharon, who is the owner of the Rolling Hills Asylum out in East Bethany, is it Pennsylvania? I think it's Pennsylvania. And then at 9 o'clock we'll be talking to Scott Tepperman, who is formerly of Ghost Hunters International, and now he's got a big career going in the horror film industry, so we're going to be talking with him. Um, so I hope you will all stay tuned, talk with us, um, and um, you can always get on our website um, on the blogtalkradio.com website, um, look up DTM Radio, or you can go to dtmwickedradio.com backslash beyondparanormal and um, click on the listen and chat button, and you can get into our chat room, ask us any questions you have, um, make comments. You can always call in and listen, 818-431-8214 or 713-955-0384. We will have our guests on live so you can ask us any questions, comments you have. And that's that. And Ben is here. Hello, Ben. Hello, everyone. I will be in and out as I am working with my little Girl Scout troop back and forth as we're roasting marshmallows tonight. So I will be joining you fireside from afar, but I will still be here. Um, yeah, we also just had like a major um, baby bird crisis. Um, one of our friends' kids, kids just <laughs> knocked a baby bird's nest out, so we had to put that back up. So I really hope um, all the birds are okay. Um, and I was just told that Sharon is online with us. Sharon, are you there? I am. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Ben. How do I Hi, guys. How, How are, are you? you? Good. Nice to meet you both. Well, it's actually not the first time. We met you at the Parahistory Con. Oh, that's right. Oh, you know what? You're right. Oh, sorry. Dog's going to bark. <laughs> sorry about that. That's okay. we, got, we have our own plus kids. In fact, I have three plus. I have three plus my three plus. So we're doing oh, all right. Oh, my gosh. We have, two we have two small Maltese, so they're like babies themselves. It's like it's like watching toddlers, and they yap and yap and yap. And then we have... Uh, a lab retriever mix. So that's he's, a household. Tiki is a handle. He's like a two year old. He's yeah, thirteen then, going on uh two. He's crazy. And he's adorable. I had him in your profile picture and I was just I loved the picture so I was like, Oh He's he you know what, I love him to death. He's getting old and crotchety and uh he's tending to love Brad more than me, which is making me pissed off, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. I think he needed the testosterone. He had too much estrogen around him too many years. Now he needs all the testosterone. So. Oh. Well, that's good. Well, so sorry. Now I'm out with the kids of the group. Yep, and now you're going to have to mute your phone. I I will mute in between. Um, I just wanted to hear in between what's going on. I'm here with my little Girl Scouts. What group number? <laughs> I don't know, they're local. Well, we're with the Phillipson Girl Scouts here today. We have our, our extra share, and we're roasting marshmallows. Fun. And right now we're doing the pit stick cut, the cutting ceremony here as they're trying to find the perfect marshmallow stick, and Delaney has decided to pick one that looks like it has more horns than a deer that's 50 years old. So I guarantee well, she's looking she at getting sugar fest more than one marshmallow. So I think she's very clever. Well, make sure you mute your phone because I can't hear anything. Okay, I will mute in between. So if you need me, just make sure you mention my name twice. All right, hold on, let me see. <laughs> All right, that's. <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm sorry, I'm a little overwhelmed tonight. I bet. Sounds like it. Lisa's never oh, gone. My. So, Parahistory Con, yes, that was when we saw you. We saw you the first night at the party. 
And no, in that verse, you and God, when you were talking it's... to our producers, Jenny and Jeff. No, I know. I know exactly who you are now. And you bought, you have that house that you were remodeling the end. Yeah, yeah, the old Fox Run. Yeah. 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 Not... It's quite been in... crazy. I've been running on, like, no sleep for days, so you'll have to forgive me. Oh, I know how that is. Um, yeah, our, our place isn't quite quite the uh, monstrosity that your your place is, but we have our own little our own little tiny little haunted place. But yeah, <laughs> nice. So tell me, like a little bit about yourself. Um, how did you get into the paranormal? I know that you were oh, with a group and got involved. Um, I would say growing up. You know, my, I was always interested in it. We always lived in houses that were active. My mother always told me stories about when she was growing up. So it was always kind of in the, you know, in the forefront of my life in, in, in some fashion or another. And, uh, you know, you never really knew anybody that was investigating at that point, although my, my mother had an antique store. And she did know this gentleman that that was an investigator and used to write books and so forth. But, you know, you're different ages you don't necessarily pay attention when you're real young you don't really care and then when you're a teenager you're into other things so by the time I was really interested in it I wasn't until my 20s or 30s and so you know things just kind of snowballed from then on now your group um you were with a paranormal group and you you had visited rolling hills a few times correct only once way back in 2008 I had come out here in the spring of, uh, in the summer of 2008 in June, and uh, had like just three incredible nights of activity out here, and mm-hmm. uh, went back to California and didn't think I'd ever come back to Western New York because I used to live in New Hampshire and I left there for a reason. I don't like the snow for one thing, and uh, and then I got a call in the spring of '09 that the place was closing down, and and I just was compelled to try to buy it. I don't know why. I really don't. It was just an overwhelming urge. I just can't even explain it. I, I, yeah, I I really don't know what, you know, what compelled you to buy this giant, it's what, like 50,000 square feet or something? It was something astronomical, you told me. Yeah, it's actually, we remeasured it just recently, and it's actually uh, just shy of 60,000. Wow. Yeah, it's huge. So we have 11 and a half acres and a couple of outbuildings and our house is on the property. And so, yeah, it's a pretty big property. And it's really funny because, you know, I walk through the building now and I'm like, hmm, I wish it was a little bigger. <laughs> you know, you get used to things. It's so funny. You never have a, enough space. It's like never having enough closets. Oh, I know how that is. I, you know, when we bought our house, I was so thrilled. You know, I was like, my bedroom has to have, a ginormous closet because that's one thing that we never had in our old house. It was just a teeny tiny closet, and you know I could hang up like ten shirts. I'm not even kidding. It was so small. So then, you know, I got a little spoiled. We moved to Florida for a little while, and we rented a condo down there. And I had this. I couldn't fill the closet. It was so big. Oh, nice. So I, so I knew that when we 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 moved, I had to have a big closet, and. My closet is pretty full right now. I'm actually running out of room, and I've I've started to go into Ben's closet and start hanging my stuff up in his closet now. My shoes and purses are just out of control. Oh, wow, well, yeah, I know. It just kind of expands. It's crazy. So what did you do? What did you do? For, what do you do for work? Um, who um, I who are you this, talking to, me or her? This is like, I would I ask you. Like, I'm sorry, there's a huge delay all of a sudden. I don't know why. I, you know what I have a hard time with? You guys, for some reason, have a very similar voice. So I'm trying to figure out who you're asking questions about. It's like, are you talking about me? Or are you talking? I can't tell who's who. <laughs> it's very, really weird. No, me. I was asking Sharon what she was doing for work when she got involved with the Rolling Hills. Oh, with Rolling Hills. Right, right. I have oh, not yet um, well, been I, there, I, but I, I can't wait to get there. Oh, sorry. Again, there's a huge delay. Sorry about that. Are you there? I'm here. I, was, okay. I heard Ben talking, so I stopped because it was a huge delay, and I started to talk over him. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 
so what were you doing when you got involved with Rolling Hills? Um, well, I actually I have a trade show background, trade show and special events background. So I was freelancing in that industry, and then I was putting on just little itty bitty, very small, you know, fifteen twenty person little events here and there through a paranormal group that I had. Um, but that's pretty much what I was doing. I was working the in the uh, trade show business. Oh wow! So I guess that comes in really handy right now for oh, yeah. you know Absolutely. advertising, rolling hills, and planning things. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. So has it been a challenge for you, like, having this place? Well, I mean, it had to have been a little overwhelming at first, I imagine. Well, yeah. I mean, there's never enough time. It's like four full-time jobs. And, uh, you know, I'm working around the clock, and I've been here four and a half years um, by myself with just the help of volunteers. And then, as everyone's seen on Facebook, I now have a boyfriend who's here, and he's gotten immersed. Um, thrown into the, the deep end of the pool, if you will. And so it's been, you know, great to have his extra help. He's got a business background as well. So, but yeah, it's been, it was overwhelming. It's, it's, it's a lot to take on. People don't realize all that goes into it 24 7. They just, you know, they, they sign up for a ghost hunter or a tour and they show up and you're like, hey, hi, welcome. And you do the tour and then you, you sit in the what we call the green room, or we sit in what we call the green room, which is like the break room, while everyone goes out and investigates. And they think that, you know, oh, they said a great way we just give a tour, and they sit on the couch all night. Now, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, that's the only time we have a break is when we're doing that. We consider that a break. But, well, if you have, like, security, you, know, you have to watch security and everything while you have people roaming around, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We have security. We have to do bathroom breaks. So, you know, we got to man the little store that we have, we're on asking, you know, answering a lot of questions, and we go and help the people investigate, but I mean, it's just the day-to-day operations that wear you down, it's all the, you know, the computer work, and the sales, and the marketing, and the public relations, and, you know, the maintenance, and, you know, but I was out chopping down trees yesterday, and I mean, it's just, it's a lot of work, people just have no idea, that's great, I'm not complaining, but um, they need to see a day in a life of Sharon and Brad, and they'd have a new, a new uh, fond respect for people who own buildings. Wow, yeah, and I, I know how much work that we've had to put into to to this place. It's been crazy. I, I mean, yeah. you know, when they bought when the um, past owners bought the restaurant and everything, they gutted out the old kitchen, everything from the restaurant. They did half the repairs wrong, and. <laughs> We've had to like literally like re gut the house and have to try to do everything and it seems like everything is a project and then another project and then another project. So it's Well it's like an onion. You start one thing and before you know it it's it, you know, it goes down to ten different other directions and you haven't even worked on the thing that you started to work on because it's opened up all this can of worms. So people, you know, I could fully know what you're talking about. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It, it it does. It seems like if we open a wall to put up a new piece of drywall, suddenly it's like, oh no, there's something else that has to be fixed. So it's like, you know, we had um, a little bit of water come in, so we took down the ceiling, and then we realized that the beams were were bowing, and so we had to, you know, get those fixed and everything. So it's like jacking and pulling and moving and. Uh huh. Yep. No, I hear you. It's crazy. So it's, um, yeah, it's a constant battle, not not to even mention financially. It's like you go in thinking, oh, this is going to be so easy. We can do all the work ourselves and this and that. And then, you know, things just, like, come out of the woodwork. It's like that you don't expect. So it's 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 definitely been a challenge. So I give you a lot of credit because that's, you know, ten times what we have, <laughs> plus oh, your house exactly. and the other buildings. Yeah, well, I mean, I wouldn't change it. There's no place else I'd rather be. I just wish there was either three times more time or three times more me. Now, for everybody that's tuning in, we're talking with Sharon from the Rolling Hills Asylum, um, and you've owned it since 2008. Now, can you tell us no, a little bit about... No, I actually bought it in 2009. I actually bought it in 2009. Excuse me. Um, yep, and it's in New York, not Pennsylvania. It's in New York. Oh, did I say that? I'm so sorry. That's okay. Um, so New York. Just want people to find us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and if they are looking for you, you're at um, rollinghillsasylum.com is where they Correct. can find you also. 
Um, now, can you tell us a little bit about Rolling Hills, the, the history of it, and you know why it's so famous? Well, I mean, it used to be an old county poorhouse, and it opened up in 1827. And then in 1938, they added on the infirmary, which is the building that everyone knows as Rolling Hills. Um, and then in 1958, they added on that the huge, long east wing um, as the men stormed, and then it became, in 64, the Jesse County Nursing Home. And then it sat empty. It closed down in 74 and sat empty for about 10 years. And then it had three private owners, um, all lasting 10 years prior to me. And then I came in on in 2009. Why it's active? Um, 300 years of history, thousands of deaths, a lot of people living here, a lot of energy. Um, I guess if I knew a real specific answer to that, I guess we'd have a, a little bigger clue to the paranormal, but um, there's just a lot of energy here. Mm-hmm. Now, a poorhouse, it was a, a government, was it like a government? Um, it was a county, like a, a county run. Like a hospital? Yeah, like a, uh, well, a poorhouse is kind of a self-sustained community where they'd hold, hold all kinds of people. It would be widows and orphans and Civil War veterans and Native Americans and drunkards and criminals and mentally unstable people and physically unstable people. It was just a, a mash of people that didn't have any any other place to go. And they would be very self-sustainable because they'd raise their own food, they'd farm their own, you know, vegetables and, and fruit products, and they'd grow their own grains and make their own bread and butter and cheese and baked goods and build their own furniture. So they really were self-sufficient. And uh, it was just they were all housed in one area away from, like, major towns. So they were considered almost like the outcasts. And so they were very self-sufficient out here and um, pretty far away from the major towns. Mm -hmm. Wow. So there was, like, a lot of different kinds of people that were there at at all times. Um, Absolutely. They were only broken down by or segregated by sex. So men's dorm, women's dorm, that kind of thing. Wow. Now, I read in um, part of the bio that residents were refer- referred to as inmates, almost like it was like a prison. Yeah, everyone, it was just a generic term back then that everyone was referred to as an inmate of the, of the poorhouse. Now, why? why, it's, just why like, it, it's just like asylum. People always, like, jump to the conclusion that it's a negative term. And asylum, by definition, actually means safe haven. If you think of, like, political asylum, it's a mm-hmm. safe haven. So inmate isn't necessarily a bad name. It's not like it's just that now in, in current society we attach that word to prison. But it really, it's it, it's an inmate, someone that's you know someone lives somewhere. Now, an inter- okay. Now an interesting piece of history is that um, they also made coffins there and and buried people on the property. Is that correct? Yep, they made their own coffins here. The 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 actual uh, Potter's Field is not on our land anymore. Our land encompassed hundreds of acres. And as time went on, a lot of land got absorbed back by the county. So we're down to 11 acres, and to the right of my building, or to anywhere you're standing left of the building, is the Genesee County Park. And all that land used to be the original land to the poorhouse, and that's where physically Potter's Field is now. It's actually considered part of the, the park. Wow. So it's just like the properties alone it has just a lot going on, not not to mention the buildings themselves. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just it's constant activity. I mean, we'll go in the building day or night, doesn't matter, you know, and you'll holler hello and you might get a response or, you know, you whistle down in Raymond's room and he'll whistle back or you'll hear doors slamming or you'll walk down the hall and you'll hear footsteps up above you on a flat roof and there's nobody up there and, it's just constant. The, the building is super alive. Yes, and I, I know that Ben and I have been making plans. We want to get out there, like, as soon as we can. We just – it's been crazy. We've been out nonstop for, like, the past five or six months. <laughs> oh, I totally can relate. I know how those those uh, months go by really, really quickly. It does, especially with the kids. And and now soccer season's coming up, so that's gonna like limit my time even more. <laughs> oh yeah, my bad. I don't know how you do it. <sighs> well, with three, uh, 
the older ones are pretty self-sufficient by, you know, with them wanting to do the dance, the gymnastics, the school activities, chorus, band, you know, all that. It, it gets to be a lot. We, to be honest, we do I, it I one can... at a time. That's the best way to do it. One step at a time. Yeah. Lots of concepts. That's, that's how it is. 